it's going to have the case number on it. Kendall just found a phone. I think they're handcuffing him. Nine months ago, we started with just a few thousand dollars in a tent. We sell gems and minerals online, and we were finally getting to the point where we weren't struggling just to eat. We've been broke multiple times, stuck on the side of the road eating eggs and peanut butter, but nothing has set us back more than this. All right, guys, so we're headed back down the river. We were going to go further up, but we just got a call from the police that our car got broken into. So we had just woken up on our camp spot up the river, and the cops had used the license plate to get a hold of my dad, who then got a hold of us and gave me their number. So then I contacted them and they told us that we had been robbed. Everything that we make our living off of is in our car. So we're going to meet the police right now. You guys, it's a victim's rights pamphlet. It's gonna have the case number on it, my name, and then my ID number. So when we got to the car, the cops asked us multiple questions and told us not to touch anything so that they could dust for fingerprints. Just made it back to the car and met up with the police. And guys, they took everything. They just ransacked the car. It is crazy. It's not a way to start your day. They just literally just threw everything out. They stole everything out of the glove box that was valuable. Luckily, Kendall had her ring on because they went through and looked in here for the ring. Yeah, suckers. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they had busted in the window with a hammer. There was a hammer here. They took it for evidence. Reached in, unlocked the door. I'm sure they were a little shocked when they saw all the rocks. <laughs> We did the list. We kind of went through everything, but it's hard to tell exactly what all they stole. They stole the rack off the back. The police said usually people don't steal clothes, so these people had issues. Like everything we owned was in here. I mean, we had thousands and thousands of dollars of stuff stolen. So at this point, we felt super violated, completely shocked, and didn't know what to think because everything we owned was in our car. Over $17,000 worth of stuff was stolen, including over half of our eBay store, which was about $9,000 worth of gems and minerals that we had collected over nine months. So these thieves were so desperate that they literally stole everything that they could get their hands on. They stole our suitcase full of clothes, even some bags of dirty clothes, some canned food that we had in the back for emergencies. I mean, you guys, they took everything from us. The only reason they didn't take our other half of the eBay store was because they were in in a giant bin that was too heavy to carry. So this is just a shame. It got broken into after we left last night. We traveled up the river a couple miles and camped and then got the phone call this morning. I had to canoe all the way back down. Actually stuck here until we get all this fixed. So Kendall just found a phone in our car that's not ours, still on. I so we're this pretty wasn't, pumped. This wasn't laying flat and I'm like, what the heck? And there it was. And so apparently the people that were parked right over here saw somebody today going through our stuff and they were probably coming back to find their phone. So we're about to call the cops and get them back here to get the phone. Pretty pumped. <laughs> <laughs> Kendall's over here giggling because she's super excited. We just got off the phone with the cops and they think that that's probably theirs. So we're pretty pumped. We found evidence. We found evidence. This is exciting y'all. So we're gonna keep cleaning. The cops are on their way. After we filed the report, talked to the cops, gave them all of our information, they left. But then a family came over to us and told us that they saw a man going through our car earlier that day, but they originally thought it was him going through his own car until the man asked the family, hey, is this y'all's car? And they were like, no, is that your car? Why are you going through it? So he got in his car and left. Little did we know that he was actually going through our car looking for his phone that he had left during the robbery, which makes sense because our car was a complete mess. Not even five minutes minutes after we found the phone this happened so the guy just showed up asking for his phone and we're waiting on the cops to show up they're actually they're acting really suspicious uh he was looking into the car i have the phone on me but he was trying to look through all of our stuff and uh i told him the cops were on their way but they're just down there pretending like they're fishing Right after we found the phone, a red Suburban pulled up with three people. They got out, one of them had sunglasses and a mask, and it was shady out that day, so we knew something was up. But we were pretty nervous. We knew they were the ones that actually left their phone during the robbery, but they acted like they were innocent, and they actually were the ones that called in the suspicious car. Two of them actually went down acting like they were fishing, but they left their tackle box, which was really suspicious. The other one actually walked around our car trying to find his phone while we shut all the doors. He got back in his car and just watched us for a while. And uh, pretty nervous, the cop's not answering for whatever reason. So, so the cops are finally on their way. Uh, they're in that car right there. 
and we've got everything out of the car and they were walking around the car looking for the phone. I shut the door right in time. <laughs> yeah, it was, I put it under the seat when they showed up so that they couldn't find it. Now it's in my pocket. Um, Kendall brought up the hounds. <laughs> so the cops are calling someone closer if they can't get here in time. But <laughs> so we're just chilling. After we found the phone, I immediately called the cops and told them that we had found it. And they said that they were on their way. But after that car pulled up and they were asking for their phone, we knew they were the robbers. We didn't know what they would do to cover up their crime. So we were super scared. I had to get a hold of the cops because there was someone here asking for the phone and we knew they were bad. I took the phone and hid behind this root wad and called them over and over and over again until they answered. And when they finally did, I told them that there was someone here looking for the phone. They said that they were gonna send someone closer because they weren't gonna get there in time. After about 30 minutes, the robbers finally got back in their car and were about to leave. But then the cops finally called Frank back. Frank told the cops that they were leaving and the cops said, and I quote, they won't get very far. They literally just left and the cops just showed up in time and pulled them off down there. I don't know exactly what's going on. I have the phone in my pocket right now. So the cops still have them pulled over down there. Another cop showed up. Not sure exactly what's going on, but we're optimistic that they got the bad guys and I still have the phone and they were definitely wanting it. So we're pretty pumped about that. We're really excited. Hopefully we can get some of our stuff back because we're poor and we live on the road. So they just got somebody out of the car and I think they're handcuffing him. So that's a good sign. The cops spent hours questioning him one-on-one -on -one down the road and we didn't know what was going on until finally I got a call from the cops. They informed me that one of them actually had warrants for his arrest so they took him to jail, but the other ones they let go because they didn't find any of our belongings in that car. Guys, we're still here at the car. They're still down there with the cops. Apparently one of them definitely has a warrant, so he's going to jail. And they're slowly getting more information about all of our stuff that got stolen. So we're just kind of waiting to hear some more news and get our window fixed. We're gonna have to camp here tonight because the insurance company couldn't do it till tomorrow. We still have the phone. I wonder if there's other cards in there. No, I looked. You looked. There were, was it once. Later that night, two detectives came by and asked us a few more questions and collected the robber's phone. They also informed us that by questioning the guy that they arrested, they found possible locations for some of our stuff. The next day, the detective was able to retrieve a few of our belongings, but only our suitcase with a few clothes, our tent, my empty purse, and my phone case, but no phone. We ended up having to stay there for not one night, but actually two, because it took so long for them to get there to fix the windshield. Those two nights were extremely stressful because not only did we not have a way to get food, we also had to camp at the spot where we were robbed, and there was two people that were involved that were still running around. Hopefully no more robbers come by. <laughs> Hopefully nobody else shows up. The first night that we were camping there, a Suburban pulls up at midnight. We couldn't tell what color it was, but it was the same model that the robbers had shown up in that day. So Frank went to check it out to make sure we were safe, and they revved their engine up like they were gonna run him over. That next day, we were out of food, and we had one more night to stay there, but luckily this older lady came by and brought us beer and Cheetos. The guy finally came to fix our windshield and he reminded us a lot of James Bond and he gave us a Red Bull. So that was pretty awesome. All right, guys, we're about to get our window fixed. Finally, we've been camping here next to our car. Pretty pumped about that. We're out of food, we're hungry, but we couldn't go anywhere because flat tire and a broken window. The windshield is off, folks. The canoe place next door aired up our tire because we didn't have our pump anymore because the thieves took it and we were finally able to leave. We recently found out that they convicted the guy who left his phone in our car as the robber. Stay tuned because they're doing further investigation and we'll have more details for y'all in our next video. We want to give a huge shout out to all the law enforcement involved. They went above and beyond the call of duty and helped us so much during this devastating time. So thank you guys so, so much.